Hello everyone, Russell Wright, Network Empire, and G++. And now we're going to go into the quick start video two, where we're talking about once you have a feed, where do you stick it? Now it's really important, and this is one of the most confusing areas, not only for uh, my certification students, but anyone that I talk to who's new with RSS. I'd like to give a pre uh, as a precursor to this demonstration of how we use different RSS submission tools, and there's a lot of them. I may not even be able to fit them all in this first video, uh, but if you don't know anything about RSS, you really need to take a beginner's course. That is, if you've been online a year or less, a lot of the stuff that I'm talking to you about is probably going to be really confusing, so I am recommending my friend Tom's course over at Udemy, and I'll leave you a link below. It's a great RSS course for beginners, and I'm not able to slow down and go all the way to super beginner level because there's just too much going on with this technology. However, once you take that course, it'll take you about, I don't know, two or three hours, you'll be an advanced superstar when it comes to understanding really simple syndication and the two ways that RSS technology can be used. And the reason people get confused about it is because uh, there's a female end for RSS and then there's a male end. Most of the time you hear organizations talking about RSS, they're talking about how do you use it in order to add people to your, in order to subscribe to people's blogs so that you get constant updates with like your Google Reader. Okay, Google Reader is something that's tied to every one of your Google accounts, whether it's your Gmail account or what have you. Let me just show you what that looks like just so you know what the female end is about. Google Reader is tied to whatever Google account you're using, whatever Gmail account you're using, and there's a one-to-one -one relationship with every application tied to every Google dashboard. So here's an example of what my reader currently looks like. A lot of it's experimental. These are things that I'm doing for my own network. And those of you who remember last year, before this updated uh, G++ course, I was really upset because Google got rid of the mail end of their RSS feeder and they took away the Google Shared Reader. And the reason that made me upset is because when somebody gives you a Google RSS feed, when someone gives you an RSS feed, they're giving you a lot of power. And if you know what you're doing with it, you can syndicate that RSS out to the web. Okay? So the Google Reader is a great example of what to do as a subscriber, as a subscription with RSS. Okay? But what you really want to do for promotion, which we're going to talk about next in this video, is syndicate that through the various RSS networks. Okay? We're not talking about the reader stuff or how you might use it to subscribe. We're hoping that you'll be able to shove your RSS feed and your Google Plus RSS feed or any feed out there and other people will subscribe to it, humans, robots alike. Okay, and especially with video, we find a lot of people borrowing and searching and pulling RSS feeds that have video tied to them and then republishing those videos to their own blogs. And if you own those pages and those links and those videos, you're going to get traffic back to your site by what we call feed jacking. And feed jacking is something that most people don't understand is happening really commonly right now. So that will help you get an understanding of the difference between passive female or reader based RSS, one thing you can do to subscribe to others, but we're focused on, fo focused on how you can promote yourself, promote your memes, promote your concepts, products, and ideas out to the universe and literally cross-pollinate your theme cluster video RSSs automatically out on the web. And Google Plus is only one of those feeds that you can syndicate out there. Okay, so what do we use? We use RSS submit software. I'm going to give you some insider tips here that you probably haven't heard anywhere before, and I'm going to show you some uh, hair pulling experiments and uh, things that I've learned that are very surprising. Remember how I talk about how Google loves Google? If it's YouTube, if it's Google Plus, if it's Google Docs, if it's uh, you name it, um, uh, it used to be Google Buzz, that's gone now, but any Google platforms or YouTube, Google platforms love Google platforms and you can actually nest them together, it's a nestedness. You can put a YouTube video inside your Google Plus and it used to be I could run my Google Plus feed through FeedBurner. FeedBurner is a application that comes with your Google account, see it's a one-to-one -one relationship what we call the Google Dashboard. And you used to be able to run these through there. They are now forbidding, uh, at least as far as I can see, please email me if you find some kind of exception to this rule. They will not allow you to burn uh, any feed burner. Feed burner will not allow you to burn, uh, take your Google Plus RSS feed and add it to them. Okay, here's an example of my attempt to turn my Google Plus feed into an RSS. If I click on it, you can see that it does generate the feed. Let me show you the actual feed. But if I try to go to any of the links, that should lead to individual 
um, individual Google Plus pages, okay, it won't allow me to do that. Let me show you a quick example of what it should look like, and I find it pretty amusing that Google is not allowing it because it's almost as if the Google Plus, uh, uh, Mr. Horowitz, who's the CEO or the uh, executive director of the Google Plus head of the department, called over to the um, feed burner department, which is really kind of at half mast right now. It's not a really we. Do, some people are expecting the end of feed burner as we know it, probably within the next couple of years. We're going to talk about that in the next year or so. We'll talk about that. And said, hey, you can't let people generating feeds from Google Plus work. <laughs> now, if I'm wrong about this, please do contact me, and we'll find a solution for everybody. But okay, what's supposed to happen with your feed burner feed is what happens with your raw network empire. G plus RSS maker is you just click on this and it should take you right to the post. Here's a client, Ramona's RSS feed. It should take you right to her individual Google Plus microblog. Okay, let's go here. It should take you right there. Okay, but as soon as you run it through FeedBurner, they're basically saying, eh, just stick with Google Plus. Why you want to run it through another Google platform? What are you trying to do? Cheat? Yeah, because early on I was doing some pretty fancy dancing with FeedBurner and Google Plus and and video YouTube, and I, it was a like a triple trifecta of Google platforms all just giving me this awesome Google nutrients. Well, they they stopped that. I do have a solution for you on that called FeedBlitz, and we're going to show you that in a moment. So let's get back to the one solution that I think is good for everybody, beginners, advanced alike, okay? We call this RSS Submit software. It's a great software. It's a desktop application. It's not much to look at. doesn't have a web 2.0 feel. You might be disappointed if you like, uh, you know, fireworks and, you know, crazy 3D special effects and all these things. It, there's not much to look at, but it does the job. It's called RSS Submit. You can look it up on Google or you can use our affiliate link, whatever you want to do. I have it on my desktop here, and I simply open it up, okay, and it opens up RSS Submit, and it looks just like this. You can see I previously ran an RSS feed. Now, this is not limited to Google Plus RSS feed. You can do this with any kind of RSS feed. In fact, when we have a new blog or a video pin site or any of our other blogs, we um, submit this just to get the ping juice to it, okay? We don't believe in spinging. You don't want to do this every day or ping spam spinging. Uh, what we do like is to make sure that you get submitted to all the directories at least once. You can definitely do this with your Google Plus feed. So let me give you an example. Let's take one of my client's feeds. Okay, let's go over. This is my personal feed. Let's take a look at Here's a feed I pulled from one of my clients as a demo. Pure Fire Infrared. She sells Fire Infrareds on the internet, Fire Infrared saunas and heating pads and all kinds of great things for health. Let's pull this. Just right click on it and save link as. Okay, actually I think what I want to do is right click and copy link. I'm running a little bit slow here. Hang on a sec. Yeah, that was definitely the wrong, sorry. Copy link address. And you're going to go back to your little application. I'm going to stick it right in here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and add that. And then you're set. You're going to get this thing pinged. It's going to go out to all the directories, so on and so forth. Now, um, I was telling you how I used to make feed burner feeds, and it was awesome, and then they stopped me from doing it. Best of luck. Here's an example. It won't click through. It just says forget you and we're not going to allow you to redirect back to another Google platform. They, they're on to us, <laughs> in other words. Um, so I did find another uh, technology called FeedBlitz. It does allow us to do that. And I'm still confirming that right now. FeedBlitz uh, is Phil's uh, technology. He's actually preparing for the end of uh, FeedBurner. Okay, here's Purifier Infrared. You can see, if I click on that, let me see if it takes us to that. RSS tracker. We don't want a tracker. We just want the link. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at finish setup. Okay. Let me just double check this. Congratulations and welcome you. Send test now. Let's see how that works. When you're done with FeedBlitz, it's actually going to create a mobile feed, an email feed, and a regular feed. And this is an advanced application, I got to tell you, because it's designed for both the human world as a newsletter. You could literally repla replace the RSS reader link 
on your own blog so that when people subscribe to you, which is what we're focused on, that they get a better experience than they would get with FeedBurner. Okay? So um, that's not really what we're going to do with Google+, but I just wanted you to show that here's what uh, Ramona's feed, this is the client whose test I just did. Remember how when you used to click on this and it would air out in FeedBurner because FeedBurner is like, hey, you're linking to a Google platform that we gave you in the first place. What are you trying to do, dude? Cheat the system? Well, yeah. So let's see if uh, Phil's system works better. Yep, Phil's system works like clockwork. Okay, so I just created a feed. This is what I love about FeedBlitz is Phil, when he created the software, he has what's called a FeedBurner evacuation kit. And when things like this are happening, it makes it really clear to me that you better start thinking about evacuating uh, FeedBurner because, you know, you can't get the credit that you used to get. Okay, each one of these are unique uh, submissions on Ramona's G Plus update. These are all things that she has submitted to her Google Plus RSS profile. Okay, and notice how you only see one. So Google does give you an entire page. You see, it's your Google Plus ID post and then the post ID, okay? And those get indexed, okay? So fine, if FeedBurner won't let us ping those posts and get further reach, that's, that's all right. We'll go ahead and do it with FeedBlitz. Great service, incredibly inexpensive. Get it, use it, and we're going to submit that. So I'm going to take Ramona's G++ RSS feed right here, and I'm going to add it to the software that this video is about and there's a lot of questions that I always get. See how I just added it? I've, you're at, you may be thinking to yourself, okay, you just added the raw feed created by the Network Empire G++ RSS creator, but you also have a feed from FeedBlitz. Why do the same? Well, one is a raw feed, the other is created by FeedBlitz, and there is not a diminishing return. The reason is some systems and blog uh, directories that you're going to submit to uh, enjoy FeedBlitz more, some enjoy the raw feed more. It depends on what they're for. Uh, some feeds, it's ideal to submit for the directories, like Pingler. Uh, other feeds, it's ideal to submit if you have a human being that you want to see the feed. Like, for example, FeedBlitz is probably better to run through Facebook because Facebook gives you real traffic to your feed. In fact, when you go into your Google Analytics file after using RSS Graffiti, which is a Facebook RSS threader we're going to talk about in advanced techniques, um, you'll actually see inside your Google Analytics RSS forward slash RSS and that means you've been getting traffic directly from your Facebook page to your RSS feed and that's what you want. These are advanced techniques and you know this stuff, you know more than most of the people out there. We're going to cover a lot of this stuff in both this course and content curation. But RSS submit. I'm sorry I don't have a software included in this um, course. The course is inexpensive so obviously I couldn't include a software for you to submit your RSS feeds but I am showing you what we use and this software cost us 80 bucks. There's another alternative that costs 30 that will show you that is still in testing but I know this one works so there's two kinds of directory RSS directories that this software submits to. One is the instant and one requires hand curation. All right. Um, for beginners, uh, the fast and dirty uh, primary module that comes when you pay $80 for this RSS submit software is fine. This is the same software that is getting used by the people on Fiverr. If you go to the RSS submit section of Fiverr and you look at the guys who are offering to submit your blogs and all of your feeds for $5, they're using the enterprise version of RSS submit. I could put pretty much any number of RSS feeds in here, click add, and then click submit and walk away and go to lunch or even overnight and come back and all of those RSS feeds would have been submitted to the various RSS directories, the automatic RSS directories, with only two of them requiring an email validation, which I can do in the morning when I arrive back at work. Okay? You can also have your outsource staff do this. My point is, if you're doing a lot of web work like we are, a lot of web development, paying 80 bucks you know, you can easily get your return on investment. After I did seven Fiverr gigs for clients, I've paid for the software a seven times, well, you know, 12 or 18, whatever. The point is that if you're doing this a lot, you want to own the software. If not, I'll leave the Fiverr link of somebody who I know uses this enterprise version for five bucks. You can get it submitted if you don't want to own the software, okay? So let's go ahead and show you how that works. See how we have, I'm going to go ahead and remove this because I did that yesterday. Here's the G++ Network Empire RSS that was created by, that is the raw RSS feed 
Okay? And we already know where that is, but I pulled from Purifier Infrared. This is a client's thing. I just right clicked on it and I uh, copied the link address. I tossed it in the application. Then I went over to Feed Blitz. Okay? And I made another feed. You're going to have to walk through the process on Feed Blitz and how to do that. And I grabbed that feed. I probably should have called this G plus RSS healing grapevine or client or but I want to include the um, I want to include the keyword in there if I possibly can so next time I won't go so fast I'll put G plus RSS purifier infrared okay that way she gets her keyword in there and I'll add that here I've got those two added and then I just click submit all actually I'm just gonna go submit all yeah okay what happens is this thing begins to rock and roll and it's very easy you can see it going through right here under the two section. Let me make sure you can see that. Okay. Okay. Right here, you're going to watch it. If you want to, you can watch it submit everything. Golden feed. It gets all the easy one. Day pop. Gets you all those pings. All right. So now you've got two kinds of feeds. While that's running, let me just go ahead and look at something here. Go to the fleet feed blitz account, and I bet there's a way to change the uh, RS the RSS truncation. You can do a lot of this under your site dashboard. He also gives you the embeds, okay? G plus plus RSS. And so when you first submit, I'm not going to show you how to use feed blitz. You should take his tutorials. But when you first submit, you can choose the keyword just like FeedBurner used to do and FeedBurner still does. You can choose the keyword that you want to use as your m dot feedblitz dot com forward slash your keyword RSS, okay? And that way you have your keyword getting syndicated out there, which does help because remember, uh, the services out there that are feed jacking and taking your RSS feed, especially video RSS feeds, they're doing that by keyword. So you want to include that in, all right? Great. So when we come back, these should all be submitted out to the uh, RSS feeds. And I do want to talk to you really quickly before we move on to the next video. Additionally, besides just the quick and dirty RSS submission, there's the top 55 list provided by this company, the RSS Submit Software Company. And what they offer you is a plugin that's an additional $50, I believe. And it allows you to get further reach with the top 55 RSS submission services that is recommended by Robin Good, world class news curator Robin Good. And the problem with it is that it requires hand coddling and hand curation, and some of them even require um, reverse links or back or mutual links or a link exchange type system. And I'm going to not show you how to do that in this particular video, but I just want you to know that it is available. We do use it for clients, but we increase the price of the done for you package substantially for our clients when we offer the top 55 because our outsourcing team has to go individually through each blog and provide a backlink and create a unique platform and so on and so forth. So the fastest way, if you're as lazy as me, is to just go ahead and do the standard RSS submit version 3.5 and submit everything to the RSS service. Okay, I'm going to give you a quick screenshot here when this is all done and then we'll move on to the next video. I'll show you a couple of other things that you can do with your Google Plus feed when you get it done, when it's syndicated out there. So when we are done, you have a screen that looks pretty much like this and you can see it gives you a full report of all the systems. Okay, it's around 80 of them I believe, maybe more that it gets submitted to. All right. Then you have the option to run to, to the uh, manual directories. And if you decide to purchase that module, it's going to open this autofill web page settings for manual submissions. Ugh. That's when I go off to my outsourcing. Somebody who has the time to do that can do that. And I even have my outsourcing team use this software on our server um, so they can do that for us, okay? This along with other software. So hopefully this makes sense to you. And it makes sense that the, and also the top 55 list is the same. Okay, they, they require manual submission. The top 55 oftentimes will require backlink. So this is a higher paid system and this is something that requires a little bit more focus. Okay, I've never submitted the G plus to the um, manual submission directories and I probably wouldn't unless I mixed it with a feed from my main blog okay so it alternates out 
Hopefully that makes sense to you. When I come back, I'm going to show you how to use uh, Lindex and Pingler. And that'll just give you a little bit more food for thought. Those are kind of creative ways to get regular pings. I'm also probably going to show you a little bit, um, a few other things about uh, pinging and Facebook. RSS um, graffiti is something I just want to go over quickly. I get a lot of questions about it. Something that you need to decide for yourself whether you want to run your G Plus uh, through your Facebook account. I'll show you what it looks like and you can decide for yourself. All right. I'll see you on the next video.